Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshall. Tonight, the first thing I want to talk about is a topic that I see quite often in the gun comment sections, you know, the comment sections of the videos, uh, and stuff I hear from people all the time that are pro-gun. And that is that you can't be pro-gun and vote Democrat. And that's pretty much along the lines of this notion that a lot of people have, that you can't be liberal and be pro-gun. And people ask me all the time, they're like, aren't you liberal and you're pro-gun? And I'm like, yes, because you can be liberal and pro-gun. Especially if you're a classical liberal like myself. Uh, I don't consider what a lot of people call liberal today to even be liberal. A lot of people consider uh, far leftists liberals. They're not. They're anything but liberal. Liberal means you have to have an open mind and they don't have an open mind. But you can be a true liberal and be pro-gun. Asking that question is kind of offensive even, that can you be liberal and be pro-gun? That's like saying, can you be a conservative and not be racist? You know, you wouldn't like a question like that. But, you know, it's actually more similar to a question like, well, can you be conservative and be an atheist? Well, of course you can. There's lots of conservative atheists. Can you be conservative and be anti-gun? Yeah, we've seen that. A lot of these so-called Republican conservatives that are pro-gun, they've taken as many rights away as Democrats have in the past. So that whole notion that you have to be one side of the coin politically to be pro-gun is it's ridiculous on its face. And the idea that some people that are pro-gun can't vote Democrat, well, that's ridiculous too because people are not one-issue animals usually. They have a lot of other things. Let's say you're a coal miner in West Virginia. You're very pro-gun, but you're also very pro-labor union. Because the labor unions kept your job and kept food on your table for years. So you work on the river boats in West Virginia or something. And the union has kept you in uh, 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 clothing and food and everything for your family for decades. So you're pro-union. You're pro-worker. Uh, well, you might not be able to vote Republican. You might say, well, I do love my guns, but I think the chance of the Republicans taking away my benefits and allowing the companies to raid our pensions is higher than the chance of the Democrats successfully taking our guns. So I'm going to hold my nose and vote for the Democrats because I have other things on my plate than just gun rights. So there's a conservative, someone who is very pro-gun could vote Democrat. They wouldn't even have to be that uh, liberal. They just have to be like, pro-union or so pro-work or something like that, where their cause doesn't really align with one political party that is supposedly pro-gun. Just like a liberal could be very pro-gun, but still vote Democrat because they could say, I'm pro-gun, but I'm also very pro-environment and think we need to do something about what's going on now. And I'm very pro this and I'm very pro that and I'm very pro-choice and all this other stuff to where they just couldn't possibly vote for a Republican. And they're like, well, I don't think the Democrats are going to successfully take any of my rights away. I might have to fight on them, but I don't think they're going to do it. And they, and they give me lip service on the things I do agree with. So I'm voting Democrat. Because guns is not their top priority, or guns might be the, the uh, battle they're willing to fight, whereas they're not willing to ignore the environment or take away pe women's right to choose or whatever they whatever their pet project is, you know, their pet uh, uh, topic. So, yes, you can be liberal and be pro-gun. You can be conservative and pro-gun. You can be conservative and vote Democrat. You can be liberal and you can vote Republican even. I know some liberals that voted for Donald Trump because they felt there needed to be a change. And they didn't think anything was getting done the way it was now. I'm kind of one of those liberals that can't vote Democrat. I don't vote Democrat. I used to be a Republican up until the Bush era. And then when they asked me to sign a fealty pledge to get into a rally in Portland, Oregon, I was like, fuck this shit. And I changed my uh, registration to independent very quickly. But I've always been liberal, left to center socially. And as I've gotten older, I've gotten more liberal socially. So uh, still fiscally fairly conservative. And even when I do agree with social programs like, uh, you know, Medicare and uh, welfare and things like that, it's because I think it's financially better in the long run than allowing things to go unchecked and not giving people opportunities to pull themselves up. 
Not because I'm like, everyone should get something for free. I'm like, no, because it's better for us as a society if we educate our children. So I want to spend money on education. That's not a liberal or conservative thing. That's just a financial thing. I'm like, we will have a better society with more educated people and a better workforce and be able to compete with the rest of the world industrially, technology, uh, as far as technology is concerned, technologically, I guess I should say, uh, if we educate our children. So I want to spend money on education. I don't find that to be liberal. I find that to be quite conservative, actually. It's just long-term conservative. So you can be liberal and pro-gun. You can be conservative and be anti-gun. Not everyone's priority or top priority is guns. Some people believe the Democrats will take their guns, but they think they can defeat them. I kind of fall into that category. I do believe Democrats will try to take your guns if you give them a chance because it's catering to their base. But I don't think they can win. I think we can defeat them every time. I think we have the law on our side. We have the Constitution on our side. So I'm not worried about that fight so much. And I can see where a lot of other people have that same issue. You know, that's a fight they're willing to fight because they think they can win. It's not their top priority even. So there's other things on top of their list, just like people can be conservative and, and guns aren't their top thing. Uh, in fact, if you looked at most conservative voters, guns weren't the top things on their minds. It was public health and the economy. That's what they cared about. If you looked on the left, it was the environment and public health and the economy. Uh, guns didn't figure into any of the factors really that much. It's only a minority that cared about that. So they don't use that as priority when they vote. They can be pro-gun and make their decisions based on other topics. Like I said, I haven't voted for a Democrat or a Republican in many years. Uh, I vote independent, I vote libertarian, I vote whatever party that I think has the best candidate, but I refuse to choose the lesser of two evils. But that's a different topic. But I myself am proof that you can be left of center or liberal, classically liberal, like a Jefferson liberal, and still be pro-gun, just like you can be conservative and be anti-gun. So I think that right there answers the question. All right, now I want to move on to another topic that's kind of an offshoot from something I talked about yesterday. In yesterday's video, I said that gun manufacturers aren't on our side when it comes to our rights. They don't want to see gun rights go away, but they don't want to see us ever get comfortable. They like the panic buying. They like people feeling like, I better get this now because that sells out their product. They love that. But a lot of people came at me and said, oh, you sound like you're anti-industry and that you want gun manufacturers to go out of business. And that's not anything I said at all. And other people came at me and said, well, should we not buy from these gun manufacturers because they don't care about our rights? That's not what I said at all either. I want to address both of these topics here. As far as them not caring about your rights, that's just not their priority. They're a business. Their priority is to sell product. And they have to maintain a balance where they're driving up as much demand as they can without actively selling out your rights and getting it to where their products are outlawed. So they're going to walk that line. That's just business. You have to accept that in a capitalist society. And I think most of us are accept that. And we're knowledgeable. It's like when you go to a car lot and buy a car, you know, you don't believe the car salesman's on your side. You know, he's not on your side. Uh, at the same way, you have to look at gun dealers. You know, they're not completely on your side, gun manufacturers, but you know, they still want to sell their products. So that gun guy doesn't want to create a society where cars aren't allowed. Uh, just like if someone uh, you know, like I said, these gun organizations that live off the money from the fight. I don't know I said, oh, they don't want the fight to go away. Well, of course they don't. If they make their living shoeing horses, if you made your living shoeing horses, would you want to pass a law that made horses illegal? Well, no, of course you wouldn't. You'd want horses, to, everybody to have horses. But you'd want everybody to be buying horses and riding horses. And you'd want to do what you did, had to do to make them do that. So they'd come to you for shoes. It's just the way it is. That's the way business is. So, uh, no, I'm not saying don't buy products from them because they're not on our side. I'm saying understand they're a business and understand they have motives beyond what we consider priorities in the gun community. And their talking heads don't support us, the common people. They don't support the fight. They don't support winning the battle. They support 
profiting off the battle because that's how they make their money. All the money from the manufacturers, the organizations, etc., through advertising, sponsorship, etc., filters down to the little bottom feeders, which are the YouTube gun guys who love to post their fear porn and their, uh, you know, their uh, discount codes, etc., to make money off the battle. They don't ever want to end the battle. How many channels do you know of right now? if they lost their sponsorship and lost their sales deals with groups, would still be doing YouTube. Not a whole lot of them. So they want it to continue. That's just part of the beast. And yes, you have to accept that. When you talk to a car salesman, you have to realize you're listening to a car salesman. Same thing with watching YouTube channels or paying attention to what the gun uh, uh, industry does. They're trying to sell a product. And you have to keep that in mind, be an educated consumer. And as far as me saying I want gun manufacturers to go out of business, no, I don't. But also, to add a little to that, I don't care if they do. If the market won't support them, if their business relies on there being a constant battle for our rights and people panicking and buying stuff they don't really want or can't really afford, if their business depends on that, and if the Second Amendment was ever settled as rule of the land and the Supreme Court says no gun laws, and they can't maintain a business then because there's not enough demand for them, then they're not needed. There'll still be the big gun manufacturers. There'll still be some boutique manufacturers. But I would far rather have four or five big national manufacturers, U.S. manufacturers, and then like a handful of uh, custom ones than I would have a hundred big gun manufacturers. If it meant we had to keep battling for our rights all the time and everyone had to live their life in a tizzy, in a panic, because they're afraid their rights are going to go away tomorrow. I would much rather have the Second Amendment settled and have the market adjust to a natural level. And if that meant businesses went out, businesses go out. That's the way the market works. I don't like artificial demand created by fear and panic and anger. So if that means some businesses going out... You know, and we just be left with the ones that can still maintain a presence, so be it. All right, everybody, I want to move on to my favorite part of the show. As I've said many, 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 many times, and I'm sure I'll say many, 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 many more times, gun talk. And today I want to talk about a question I got from someone in a chat tonight, because everyone knows uh, a question I get asked all the time. And they said, what's your least favorite question? I was like, I don't know, maybe I'd get tired of people asking me what's the best revolver. Because it's always the same answer. Smith & Wesson 686 Plus. Best revolver made today. Still the best revolver made. It's been the best revolver made for a long time. But then I started thinking, well, I don't really hate getting the question because even though I've answered it a thousand times, the person that's asking it tonight has never been there before probably. They've never been in one of my chats. They didn't hear me answer that a thousand times before. To them, it's a new question. Try not to get upset for people to ask new questions. I did get upset for someone in my chat tonight and they had to get a scolding for not doing their homework, but I try not to get upset about uh, questions like that. Uh, but they asked me another question tonight to try to mix it up a little bit. Since they said, okay, since we asked, when we ask you what the best revolver is, you always say 686 plus, and that's such a cop out now. Uh, well, what's the second best revolver? So I thought, well, I'll answer that. The second best revolver is a 586, an L comp, sp- specifically with seven shots. Same gun. Black finish. In fact, I like it better. It's just I like stainless because it may, it's easier to maintain. That's why it gets a little nudge above the 586L compass because stainless steel doesn't require a lot of maintenance. So it's the best. 586L comp is the second best. And I hope that settles everybody's curiosity as to what is the second best revolver on the market today. All right, as usual, I want to end the show today with our viewer EDC of the day. Today's concealed carrier is Trevor C., And as you can see, Trevor is carrying his Kimber Micro 9 in a 1791 leather holster, which I think is one of the best leather holsters you can buy retail right off the shelf. If you're looking for a good holster, go over to Amazon first and see if they got a 1791 for your gun. I don't think you'll be sad you did. Also, he's carrying one of my favorite belts, the Core Trackline Belt, my very favorite concealed carry belt, the only one I actually ever wear. And as you can see, he's got some pretty fancy grips on there. In fact, so fancy that I almost started worrying that maybe I was misgendering Trevor by saying he. 
Uh, if I am, I'm apologizing right now because I don't mean to do that because those grips combined with the fact that he drives a Volkswagen GTI kind of made me start thinking, well, maybe it's a uh, Miss Trevor, not Mr. Uh, and if I'm making that mistake, I'm sorry, but I will say one thing. If Trevor actually does identify as female, uh, girl, I would sue your doctor because those breast implants are way too low. But uh, all kidding aside, uh, whether Trevor is a mister or a miss, which I'm assuming he's a mister, because he does claim the GTI is his lazy ass son's car, and he just wanted to show it to me to uh, express support for a fellow two liter turbo owner, uh, knowing that I bought the Mini Cooper. Uh, I'm gonna say nice gun, nice holster, nice belt, Really good rig, and I actually like the grips. I think it adds a little class to the guy. I think it's kind of different. You don't see different like that all that often. So I, I actually like this setup. I like the gun grips, I like everything. I do like the Volkswagen GTI. If it had a little more horsepower than an all-wheel drive model, I'd be driving one today probably. But there's our viewer EDC of the day. Uh, I don't know what you'd call them. Them, they, uh, the, the grand, the honorable Trevor C. I guess that's how I'll say it. All right, everybody, that's our show for today and our show for the week since it's Friday. I will be back Monday with another show, and I hope you will come along and join us once again. I enjoyed having you here, and I hope you enjoyed being here. Until then, I want to remind everyone that we are doing the Resident Evil Samurai Edge Grip Giveaway over on TYMPPistolProject.com. If that's something you might be interested in, go over and check it out, like I said, at www.TYMPPistolProject.com. There's a link in the upper corner of this video. Check out the giveaway. Also, while you're over there, if you want to, sign up for TYM Triple P if you meet the criteria. Also, check out TYM Triple P, and if you like what we're doing with the money I get from viewers, and remember, Remember, that's the only money this channel takes is from its viewers. I do not do advertising. I do not do product placement. I do not do sponsorship or any of that stuff. I don't answer to anybody but my viewers. If you like what we do with the money, become a patron. Go on over to patreon.com forward slash the, Mar uh, the Yankee Marshall and sign up. And with that being said, I'll sign off tonight as usual by saying, as far as the state of the world today is concerned, it ain't that bad, but, you know, it is what it is. But what things will be in the future if we ignore the fear mongers and the profiteers and we keep a level head about us and realize where certain people are coming from when they tell us things and refuse to live our lives scared and angry so that we don't make bad decisions. If we do those things, if we ignore those people, what things will be in the future is better. <laughs>